I'm going to tell you something. Abraham Lincoln said, you can fool all of the people some of the time, and some of the people all of the time, but you cannot fool all the people all the time. And I'm going to tell you something. America's about to have a revolution. People, are, let me finish. They're getting mad. They're getting upset. They know they're being lied to. They know they're being controlled. And they're almost at the boiling point. That can go into violent revolution or into spiritual awakening. So if we start preaching Jesus in America as much as possible, we're going to be able to harness that anger. Listen to me right now. We're going to be able to harness that depression, harness that and say, look, let's turn it into a revolution of love and not of hate and watch God change our nation. Somebody give God the glory. Go to Acts chapter 4, verse 29. Now, Lord, look on their threats. Look on BLM, CRT, FBI, all of the three-letter curses that are on this nation. And what? Fight that alone, make it all political, start a movement that's entirely political. Let me tell you, this morning, Lance Waldo gave a majestic word from God. And I want to thank you, Brother Lance, for that. And I want to tell you what else. He and I are being put together by God for a national movement. And it's, and it's going to grow. I believe millions of people are going to join our cause. We're going to start doing a tour together called Fire and Glory. We were going to do it in the Hertz Arena in Florida until Hurricane Ian came, and that arena had to be taken over by the... Everybody give Lance a great big hand right here. <laughs> you know, the Hertz Arena had to be taken over by FEMA as a shelter, so we had to change our date. So now our tent is moving to Fort Myers where all the damage was done. So we can give away food and clothing and we're putting up our tent. He's gonna preach, I'm gonna preach and we're gonna, we're gonna seize the frustration of America against their government and harness it and channel it into a reformation of love and truth of Jesus Christ. Somebody shout right now. Mario, you're preaching a long time tonight. Well, if you had last night and tonight, it evens out. But I'm almost done. Lord, look on their threat. Grant to your servants that with all boldness they may speak your word. There's nothing in here about grant to your pastors that they leave things out that offend the outsider. It says the very opposite. That with all boldness they may speak your word. While you stretch out your hand to heal, let signs and wonders be done through the name of your holy servant Jesus. There's that moment that is absolutely undeniable. And I felt it just now. The healing virtue of the Holy Spirit has entered this tent. Now I have preached to the lost and told them what they need to do. I have preached to the pastors and I've told them what they need to do. And I've preached to the church who is watching me on live stream by the thousands across America. And I've told them what we need to do as a nation. We need to have a movement. 
But now I come to the final group. You that have diabetes. You over here, look at me, that have heart disease. You that have sciatica, that have lung constriction, that have the vestiges and the ravages of COVID still in your body. Cancer, blindness, paralysis. Mario, what in the world could you possibly say to us but to believe God for a miracle? No, I'm gonna command you to do something. I'm gonna command you to follow the edict that I'm about to give you. The transformation that Peter went through to decide to allow signs and wonders to flow through his life. I've been through that. I know what that is. I know what that feels like. But the man at the gate beautiful himself had to change. You have to change. Don't sit there thinking that your miracle is automatic, that you have no obligation to do something. Yes, you do. It makes no sense to me that you would come all this way, drag your pain-wracked body seated in here, and then stop short of the miracle because of embarrassment and fear and, yes, disobedience. What does it mean if I were to point to you and describe your illness and you and I both know that it's accurate? Why would you resist? Why would you resist the Holy Spirit? When you know that you're willing to go to a doctor and wait long hours, go through embarrassment and humiliation and maybe get a medication that has worse side effects than what's actually wrong with you. But you won't Humble yourself before the hand of God to heal you. What is that? It's the devil. Look at me, it's the devil. Satan comes and right at the one yard line, right at that moment when the change is going to occur and the miracle faith is about to be imparted, the enemy touches you and gives you fear and resistance after everything else you've done to prepare for your miracle. Pray in the language of the Holy Spirit, everyone please. Pray in the language of the Holy Spirit, everyone please. You are being healed right now. Your body is being healed. And it is not emotion. It is not psychological impression. It is not hyper suggestion. It is the power of God on your body. Mara, I feel the power of God on my body. I feel the power of God on my body right now. Wave your hand at me if you feel the power of God is coming on me, Mario. I know it. It's real. But I need a word of knowledge. I, I need a word of knowledge. No, you don't. You need the word of God. Put your hand over your heart. Say, I need the word of God. I need God to give me the word. I don't need a man to give me the word. I need God to give me the word.